Hey guys, Lewis here, we're of premiumbeat.com and today we're going to have a look at how we can revive our scorched summer landscapes in DaVinci Resolve. So we've officially entered August and depending on where you live with the hot days, we may start to see the local landscape dry up and likewise as the sun stays higher in the sky throughout the day, you may find some of your shots uh, overly bright in the sky rather than that luscious blue. Both of which these factors don't really accommodate to a summer appeal, but more of a Mad Max, it's way too hot at the moment. So let's open Resolve and see how we can fix this issue. This is the original shot and this is the corrective grade. Let's open the color page and get started. It's a straightforward two node fix. We're not gonna look at any primary color correction, so to speak, but just fixing these two issues in this tutorial. And while the information is going to be primarily directed towards landscape shots due to the methods employed, you could take this information in theory and apply it to several different circumstances. So be sure to continue watching even if you don't have a dried up landscape to bring back to life. There are going to be two ways in which we can do this. The somewhat preferred method is to use a parallel node structure, but to keep things simple for newer users, uh, we will work with the nodes serially so we can see the steps in a linear fashion. I've already placed a conversion slash correction node down, and this is where you would just put your correction luck to add that gamma curve back into your log footage. Although I am using film convert, but essentially the same thing to an extent. First, we need to fix the sky. Now, nodes work in a linear fashion, so any changes I make after the correction node will not consider the original image data. So if I was to add a serial node, then reduce the exposure or the highlights, it's gone. I, I can't get that back. Therefore, I'm going to add a node to appear before this correction by pressing Shift S. And now any alterations we make will take place before the second node's adjustments. When you have a bright sky, it's painless to qualify and fix, especially if there are no other white elements within the composition. Therefore, we're going to select the qualifier tool and pick a bright region within the sky and we should get a successful qualification off the bat. If we turn on the highlight tool to see the adjustment, yeah, we can see and that's pretty great. It has keyed a part of my neck here though. So if we go down to the selection range and select the qualifier tool with a minus symbol next to it, we can remove that. Now there are some parts around here that hasn't been successfully pulled. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we're gonna fix these anomalies in a moment. Now if I turn off the highlight tool, we can make our adjustments. We're gonna take the offset wheel, making sure we're in log adjustments and decrease it to make an overall adjustment to the entire tonal region of the sky bringing it down until we can see the sky and the clouds. Depending on the color or lack thereof, you could also add a slight touch of blue to the sky depending on how bad it looks, but you want to make sure it's only an incremental adjustment so you don't add blue to the white clouds. If the blue sky is visible, sometimes you might just be better served by bumping up the saturation instead of adding blue. Now, the thing is with the sky, especially on a sunny summer's day, it's, like it's gonna naturally be bright and we don't want to nullify that summer sunny day element. So we're gonna open up our custom curves, create a point where the midtones are displayed, this mid region, so they don't get pushed up. Then create a curve where the highlights are and push that up so our sky still looks relatively natural and bright, but we can just see all the detail. Uh, now, if you have started to clip your highlights, we're gonna go over to the highlight wheel and just bring that back down to control it. But by keeping the custom curve as is, it has still kept that uh, natural brightness to the scene. Now, of course, we do have a, a glaring issue looking at us. The edges of this qualification does not look great. So go back into the qualifier panel and underneath the selection range, we have some fine tuning elements. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna bump that denoise all the way up, much better. But now if I just flick the node on and off, we can also see it's darkening the edges, uh, especially around my ears, a little too much. So we're gonna increase the clean black until it appears normal. There we go. Now, you may notice that there is this green bluish aberration on the edges. Uh, this is just an artifact of the lens I was using. I use a Voigtlander 17.5 millimeter and uh, when quite open, uh, it's just a trait of the lens. However, when you make edge adjustments, uh, I guess you could say that the aberration becomes a lot more predominant and I will show you how to decrease this a little later. But now let's jump over to the grass. So in a meadow or a landscape like this, there are typically gonna be brown dirt colored foliage such as straw, weeds, branches. Uh, if we zoom in, we can see some dirt and sand around here. Therefore, when we make our selection, we want to avoid these areas. And with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the HSL curves, 
go to this drop down menu and select hue versus hue. The hue first hue curve lets you change any hue in your image to another hue. <laughs> Perfect for quick adjustments. So with that, we're just gonna select a dry area of the grass and in the curve panel, the point that represents that color will appear. And in fact, we can read the entire scene from this information within this panel. I can tell you that this curve represents my skin. If I click my skin, a point should appear. Yep. And this area over here represents the sky. So often you can read the scene by seeing what's represented within this curve panel. Now all we're gonna do is bring the hue curve down to find the type of green that we want to adjust our meadow to. And the Y axis of this curve panel correlates to the X axis. So if we move down the Y axis, we're effectively moving right along the X axis. If I move it all the way down, you can see the hue changing is in progression of the hues to the right of this point. And of course, if you push up along the Y axis, you're moving left along the X axis. As with all forms of color correction, we want to make the smallest adjustment, no substantial changes. But yeah, I like this. Now there are these blotches of brown. We're not gonna try and fix these because in this particular circumstance, it's just the location. Uh, if I go to a different shot, we can see that these plants and weeds uh, are of that color. It's not an, uh, an incorrect adjustment, so to speak. So there we have it. Walsh green grass, just like how it looks when it rains all the time and not when it's dried up because it's been sunny for several weeks straight. Not that I'm complaining. Now as a bonus tip, if you are shooting on a lens that produces aberration and becomes especially noticeable after an edge adjustment like this, well, we're just gonna go to said edge adjustment and create a parallel node. Then I will open the effects panel, find a chromatic aberration and add it to the bottom node. I'm then gonna turn on find the red edges and zoom into the area that needs the fix, uh, red cyan, I should say. And then I'm gonna push that cyan edge into a different direction which will hopefully nullify the artifact. Okay, cool. I like that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. My name is Bean Lewis with premiumbeat.com. And now I'm gonna turn on the fan, have a nice cold glass of water and continue changing my desolate landscapes into looking something a little bit more welcoming. <laughs>